The Chinese migrant workers in this picture are in all probability fleeing neither destitution nor oppression. They probably are reasonably well educated, probably a, what we would consider a high school level. They probably have very little difficulty making sure that their basic needs are met, food, shelter, and clothing. But that's about it. Their villages can provide them with the bare necessities of life, but they feel bored and somewhat thwarted, so they migrate. If you visit today's quote-unquote third world, you will find countless numbers of people exactly like this. They have enough to keep themselves alive, but nothing else. And what's more, they have all the time in the world to think about how thwarted they are, and they have access to the mass media in the form of the cinema, television, and the internet, most of all. So they see that their plight, their position in life, is not the law of nature. So they are drawn to places where they believe they can actualize themselves to a greater degree than where they are now. I think that people who fear mass immigration or mass immigration from cultures that are apparently opposed or sufficiently different from the dominant culture need to bear this in mind when trying to grasp the scale and the impetus behind modern migration. The draw of the West or the developed world or whatever you want to call it is enormous. It is beyond any way to manage. You can't simply reduce the draw that Europe, North America, Japan, whatever, has on these masses of bored people in the planet. The demand, in other words, is also a supply. The demand to live in the West also creates an enormous supply of people who want to live in the West or want to live a Western lifestyle. The Chinese government itself is apparently frantically struggling to give its population a Western lifestyle. Many other countries are attempting to do exactly that because they have concluded that they either provide their people with prosperity or the, their people will provide them with a revolution. I think that when people in the developed world, quote-unquote again, look out at the masses of people in the quote-unquote non-developed world, they should be careful in seeing starvation, destitution, darkness, etc. That's not really what's there anymore, at least in most of the world. There are bits of the world in which, yes, indeed, people don't have enough to eat. Uh, they don't have physical safety and security. But the overwhelming mass of people who are struggling to get to the West are actually chasing a dream. They're not running from a nightmare.